Hey, we're back right here. Um, <clears throat> that was pretty funny. If you are seeing this later, um, and I'm hopefully people will jump right back on, <clears throat> uh, Janet just saying he'll do it again. And somehow <laughs> when I started this, uh, <clears throat> I had the filter on where it said, find a face. And it was a funny face. And I was sitting here, um, sitting here for, uh, Aaron, how you doing? I was sitting here for about 10 minutes and not knowing that I had bug eyes. <laughs> I guess Janet walked by and went like that. I said, what? And so, uh, but I was sitting here preaching with bug eyes. So that, hey, that's just pretty funny. Now I did delete that. So if you, <laughs> you ain't got it, you ain't going to get it. So, uh, <clears throat> but uh, I'm going to set this actually camera back up here right now. and uh, slide my chair up a little bit. <clears throat> Appreciate everybody joining us back, but that was pretty funny. Uh, I, I, Cause I did see myself. Never had that happen before, but uh, um, <clears throat> I'll say I, I appreciate Hope like her wholeness. We had a great service this morning. And uh, yesterday I got to, uh, to skydive. Many of you saw that. And uh, um, myself and Karen and Neil Stallings, our cousins and friends, uh, they went up. They, you know, you go up in tandem, and only four can get in a plane. So those two, and I thought I was going to have to go by myself. But there was uh, two fellows, Matt and Justin, that went. They were jumping on their own. And uh, they were social distancing. You had to wear your mask and all that. So that yesterday was the first day that they could open back up. And uh, it, it, it was a good experience. Um, I'm terribly afraid of heights. Terribly. And I never got nervous. I mean, never. Most of you, you may have seen the videos that were posted or the pictures. Thanks to our, uh, our nephew, Brett Ainge. He, um, he did the um, steel photography. Janet did some photos with my phone and uh, uh, some videos, and I spliced those together. So, uh, But uh, <clears throat> if you hear anything... Uh, Janet's in the bathroom giving um, uh, MC the baby a bath. Riley's in the uh, living room uh, <clears throat> playing on the phone. <clears throat> but uh, I appreciate everybody just joining us tonight. Uh, hopefully you hear earlier Janet saying, <laughs> you won't see it on this video, but Janet's saying he'll do it again. Um, Jesus will do it again. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> no, Janet's, Janet's saying, I know a man who can. Uh, and uh, that's Jesus and uh, I was preaching and I sang this on the other version just a little verse it said he'll do it again he'll do it again look at me now look at me now from where I had been he'll always come through for you, he's the same now and then. God does not change. You may not know how. You may not know when. But he'll do it again. Thank you for those uh, thumbs up and likes uh, <clears throat> right there. We do have uh, two of our grandchildren here. And uh, I was wondering if I was going to be able to get here on time tonight. Because Janet and I ended up having to go to... Um, uh, our cousin's house, Lisa in Elm City, and uh, <clears throat> pick up some stuff. But we got it, got it back. Jared came over and we got it in my storage unit. So, But I uh, had a great service this morning at Harbor Light Holiness. And uh, what, I, what I wanted to point out, I was asking the Lord and praying, Lord, what would you have me preach right here tonight for these 10, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, whatever it is. And uh, he led me to Psalm 138, 7. <clears throat> and... Uh, then we started our drive-in service at Harbor Lake Holiness. And the pastor, although he didn't use the same verse, he used the same topic. The Lord gave him the same topic that he gave me today. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to show you. I'm going to read Psalm 138, 7, what he gave me. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, thou wilt revive me. Thou shalt stretch forth thine hand against the wrath of mine enemies, and thy right hand shall save me. Again, though I walk in the midst of trouble, thou 
will revive me. Thou shalt stretch forth thine hand against the wrath of mine enemies, and thy right hand shall save me. Lord, add to your reading of your word. So I was going to preach on, he'll do it again. He will revive us again. Now here's what the pastor preached. He didn't know what the, he, the Lord gave me. I didn't know what the Lord gave him. He preached out of Psalm 85, read verse 1 through 6, and took his text out of verse 6, which says, Wilt thou not revive us again? that thy people may rejoice in thee. He preached on, is it possible? Is it possible that the Lord will revive us again? So the Lord gave both of us the subject of reviving us again. And I'm preaching on, he'll do it again. The very first line says, though I walk in the midst of trouble. Have you ever walked in the midst of trouble? Sure you have. Because you're flesh, you're in this body. <clears throat> have you walked in trouble? Spiritual trouble is the worst kind when you ain't quite got it right with the Lord when you're sinning. You need to turn that all over to him. A, B, C, admit that you're a sinner. B, believe that Jesus was raised from the dead. C, confess that and you shall be saved. Bible says he that calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I believe after that you need to find you a good church. Find you a Bible-believing church. I read and study out of the King James Bible. If you stick with King James, you can't go wrong. Now, there's a lot of other versions out there. That's between you and the Lord. I do know that my King James Bible says that if you take away from this word, God will take away your part out of the book of life. If you add unto this word, he'll add unto you the plagues that are written in this Bible. And there's a lot of plagues. I don't want any plagues from the Lord in my life. I have given myself enough plagues in this life by sinning. I want to walk out of trouble. I want to walk with the Lord. I want to do what the Lord wants us to do. People will walk in trouble all the time with the law. You might have drank and drive. You might have got caught. DWI, that hurts your record. You pay these fines. You could have wrecked, could have hurt somebody, could have hurt your own self. Drugs, you're walking for trouble. Anything illegal, you're walking for trouble. Walk on the road with the Lord. ABC, you can be saved too. I pray you're saved. I want to see you in heaven. I want to be here as long as the Lord will let me be here and I want to do his work. I don't know what's going to happen in the future. We still, you know, we're in the midst. Uh, hopefully, most people have flattened the curve of this coronavirus to where the hospitals have not been overrun. Uh, <clears throat> hopefully, they'll get uh, um, a vaccine. Um that will not come out of China and will not profit the Chinese government like it appears it could. That's just, and I'm not going to get political on here. Um, <clears throat> you know, just like the old joke uh, said, that sister will shout at the drop of a hat and she'll drop the hat. So take in mind, if I drop my, if I'm supposed to shout at the drop of a hat and I drop my hat and then shout, I created it. Um, Maybe you know where I'm coming from. It's just kind of strange. This stuff came from China, and now they got the patent on the virus. Oh, man, come on. But uh, we're going to stay out of them, and uh, ain't going to turn this political. Uh, coronavirus is a serious thing. Uh, wherever it started, whether it was an accident or on purpose, it is serious. Be safe. Social distance. Wear your mask. Do whatever you got to do. You know, you see some reports that the CDC uh, doesn't recommend healthy people wear a mask. Uh, the mask is recommended for sick people. <clears throat> if I get around some, you know, if I'm out in public, I'm going to wear my mask right now. That's my choice. I'm going to wear my mask when this state reopens. I posted the other day. I'm going forward, and I'm going to proceed with caution. Hey, if you feel like you need to stay home, do that. That's your right to do that. But uh, we just pray to the Lord. I prayed that he would eradicate this whole thing. And uh, But folks, I said it this morning at Harbor Light Holdings, you better be seeing the end times. Is this part of the beginning of the end? I don't know. We've talked about it before. The Bible says in the last day, perilous times will come. We've lived in perilous times the last couple of months. We absolutely have. Thank the Lord. I'm still working. I'm working from home. Janet is still working, uh, still working in the office, but I'm working from home. And uh, we're still house hunting. And uh, we need to work if we're going to 
have a house in our retirement years if the Lord tarries. So uh, I just want to do what the Lord wants to do. But that trouble, though I walk in the midst of all this trouble, thou, talking about the Lord, wilt revive me. Jude says, unto him that is able to keep you from falling, I want to lean on the Lord. <clears throat> uh, what a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine, leaning on the everlasting arms. Arms, oh yes, I'm leaning on Jesus, leaning on my Jesus, safe and secure from all of alarms. I'm leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. Do I know over another verse? What? Have I to dread? What have I to fear? Leaning on the everlasting arms, I have blessed peace with my Lord so dear. Leaning on the everlasting arms, oh yes, I'm leaning, leaning. Safe and secure from all alarms. I'm leaning on Jesus, leaning on my Jesus, leaning on the everlasting on One more time. I'm leaning on Jesus, leaning on my Jesus. <clears throat> Safe and secure from all alarms. I'm leaning on Jesus, leaning on my Jesus. Jesus, leaning on the everlasting arms. Yes, Lord, revive me. I want to lean on you. It said, Thou shalt stretch forth thine hand against the wrath of mine enemies. Oh, we've all, and we've all had enemies. I don't care how good you work at it. I don't care how good you live. Somebody's going to be critical. Folks all over Facebook want to be critical. They want to stab you behind the back. Yes, they will. They will just pluck it right up. And then everybody, some of them are dying. They're preaching right into heaven. You know, I ain't never seen a funeral where the preacher stood up and said, well, he went to hell. You know, that's, you know, they always preach them in heaven. Now, I'm not the judge, and you're not the judge. Thank everybody here for, for joining, and uh, that's popping back on. But uh, I'm not your judge. But the uh, Bible says we can tell uh, by the fruits that you bear. Uh, your life, Bible says that the fruits of the Spirit are what? Peace and joy and uh, goodness and meekness and temperance. That's the fruits of the Spirit. That's some of the things we're going to get to be judged by. But, uh, yeah, I ain't never seen the funeral where the preacher said he was rotten, he went to hell, or she was rotten, she went to hell. And that's not the way our society does. Now, if someone asked me to preach their funeral, and I have preached many funerals, uh, and when I say many, half a dozen, uh, definitely been more than one. Um, I've preached a half a dozen funerals, and uh, if, I, if I believe they were saved, I, I, I would say it. But generally in a funeral, I just say, that they are now in the hands of a just God. Um, Bible says that uh, many people are going to say in that day, have I not prophesied in thy name? Have I not done many marvelous works? And Jesus is going to say, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. I knew you not. I don't want to hear that. He's talking to the church, folks. You know why he's talking to you know why I know he's talking to the church? Because he said people are gonna say, Have I not prophesied in thy name? That's the church. That's the folks that say they're saved. Have have I not done many marvelous work? You don't see sinners coming up here and saying, Well, I prophesied in the name of Jesus. He's talking to the church. The five foolish virgins and the five wise virgins, there were ten virgins. All of them were virgins. Five of them made it to heaven. They were wise. They had oil in their lamps, oil being the representative of the Spirit of God. Five of them didn't have any oil. You know, the bridegroom knocked at the door. 
And uh, the ones that were foolish said, hey, give us your oil. Give us of your oil. They said, no, you go to the ones that buy and sell and get the oil. And they went to the ones that buy and sold. And when they come back, the door was shut. That to me, and I've had a, a previous pastor's wife told me this, and it just sits well. She said she takes that to believe that about half of the church world in this world will be ready to meet the Lord. They were all virgins, but five were wise, five were foolish. So is it about half the church world that's going to be ready to meet the Lord? That's a scary thought if it ain't but half. I want to be in that number when the saints go marching in. I really do. Hallelujah. But it said, Thou wilt stretch forth thine hand against the wrath of mine enemies. If someone stretches forth thy hand against me, I'm going to let the Lord take care of it. Yeah, we, we defend ourselves. Uh, I believe in the Second Amendment and things of that nature. I uh, hope I never have to put that into practice. But I'm not going to let anybody purposely hurt me or my family. And I'm not sitting here trying to get into a debate about that. You believe what you believe and act the way you want to act. And I will do the same. That's your right and that's my right. But what I'm saying is I have seen people that say something like, I don't allow a gun in my house because the Lord will protect me. Okay? If that's your stance on it, fine. Uh, <clears throat> but let me point you to the Bible and Nehemiah. Remember what Nehemiah did? He rebuilt the wall that was broken down. And if you go through Nehemiah and read that story, you know what it said those men were doing? They were working with a tool in one hand and a weapon in the other hand. It's clear in the Bible. They were working, building that wall, but they had a weapon in the other hand to defend themselves if they needed it. I'll just leave that right there. You do it the way you feel free to do it. Yes, I trust in God. But you know what? I lock these doors at night. I trust in God, but I put my seatbelt on. I trust in God but I don't run red lights and get hit by Mack trucks, not purposely. I trust in God, but I take the medicine that the uh, doctor gives me, that the pharmacist prescribes. I trust in God, but I believe God tells us to be wise in things. And that's all I'm going to say on that right now. But it says, Thou shalt stretch forth thine hand against the wrath of mine enemies, and thy right hand shall save me. Jesus is sitting on the right hand of the Father. His right hand shall save me. I pray. I, I told you before, in the coronavirus, I have added to my prayer life. No, I ain't praying enough. I need to pray more. I try to pray all the time. The Bible says pray without ceasing. You can't pray 24 hours a day, but he just wants you to be in the spirit of prayer. When I'm riding down the road, I pray sometimes, especially when I'm on the interstate traveling <clears throat> decent distances. You know, I can pray. I can pray with my eyes open. When I'm in my closet, my prayer, my bed, I pray with my eyes closed. But uh, I believe you ought to have a prayer closet. And uh, in that prayer closet, you should pray. Pray to the Lord. Thank you, everybody, for <clears throat> joining us. But, uh, you know, talking about the Lord, Reviving us. You just got to ask him. I don't believe that a Christian goes around and purposely sins. I really don't. But if you slip, you do sin. Ask the Lord to forgive you. He's at the right hand of the Father, ever making intercession for you and me. What does intercession mean? When we ask forgiveness, I believe he says, Father, forgive them. I died for them. That's Jesus. He died for all of us. Appreciate you joining us tonight. I pray that you are saved. Everybody on here that sees that, you need to be saved. You need to really be saved. If you say to your, and you know, all you got to do is be honest with yourself. You ain't got to be honest with me. Look in the mirror and ask yourself, are you saved? <clears throat> are you living right for the Lord? Have you, A, admitted you're a sinner? B, believe Jesus rose from the dead? C, confess that and ask him to save you. The Bible says again, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I believe then in being sanctified. Sanctified is cleaning up from this world. And then I believe in being filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost like they had on the days of, you know, in, in, on the day of Pentecost in the book of Acts. But uh, you need to be saved to get.
get to heaven and eat all your sins under the blood. Uh, and I, I pray that you all. Lord, we come by and we thank each one today. Lord, thank you for everyone that's joined. Thank you for uh, every soul out here. If there's one not saved, let them pray to you right now, God. Let them say, Lord, I'm a sinner. I want to go to heaven. I don't want to go to hell. Hell was created for the devil and his angels. It was not created for human beings. God, we just thank you for all things, Lord. God, we just thank you for the beautiful day that we've had today. Thank you for the time right here on Facebook Live where this video can be shown and shown time and time again. Thank you for the safety in our skydive yesterday. and uh, Thank you for all. God, we just ask and look to you for the answers. In Jesus' name we pray. <clears throat> Amen. You know, I posted on some of those Facebook splice video, videos yesterday. I posted a little... Uh, picture of a person walking, getting ready to walk across a dark, planky bridge. <clears throat> and it said, uh, quit, and I don't remember the exact words, but quit thinking about the things that could go wrong and dwell on the things that could go right. Uh, I got something going on tomorrow that I'm going to do. Janet knows all about it. Uh, and it's a financial thing, I'll just say that. And, uh, you know, I'm always scared. To, I, I don't know why I always have been. When I go put in for a loan or do this or that or the other, I've just always been scared. I'm just scared to go say no for whatever reason. I ain't missed a payment on nothing in 30 years. But uh, you know how all that stuff works. But uh, <clears throat> I, ha I have tried to quit being scared. I'm not going to focus on what could go wrong. I'm going to focus on the positives if it goes right. So, And I want to apply that in all my life. Yes, I jumped out of, uh, as people say, why did you jump out of a perfectly good airplane? Well, the airplane had duct tape all around the back, so I don't know if it was perfectly good. I may actually do that again in life. I would like to explore, and my wife probably can hear me through the door, but I would like to explore a solo jump. I don't know. I did talk to them a little bit about it yesterday, and they give you um, a course. I think he said it was like five hours long, and she just opened the door. Uh, was that saying you want to go to? No. Uh, <clears throat> but they give you a five-hour course. I don't know nothing about the details of the cost. But, uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, she did say she wanted to go zip lining, yeah. and uh, <clears throat> hopefully we're going to get to go on vacation with Papa and Grandma, brother and sister, uh, William and Annie Merle Braswell, my in-laws, her parents. Uh, we're supposed to go to Lancaster, Pennsylvania, Amish country, uh, in August. And uh, hopefully that'll still be on. And I've already found us a couple of zip lines that we could go there. Papa and I uh, went last year. And I was 10 foot off the ground with all that stuff on. I was terrified to death to jump off. 10 foot. I believe I could even survive a 10 foot fall without dying. Uh, might break a leg or something, but uh, I had to, uh, you know, Papa went, boop, jump right off, and uh, I went, I mean, I'm really, I, I'm going as slow as I can to my feet left, and, uh, but I didn't get scared yesterday in that plane, so I'm looking forward to zip lining um, again. I don't think I would ever want, I would rather go do what I did again yesterday than bungee jump, so uh, we're just going to go see how it goes. Look, appreciate everybody joining. Now, listen, depending on the weather, if the weather is bad Tuesday, we may not have church because we're doing it outside. We'll have to wait to see. Pastor and I have already talked about it. Uh, it's his decision. But if we do not have church, I'll be here Tuesday night. If we have church Tuesday night, I'll probably uh, bump this over to Wednesday or Thursday. Um, I'll bump it to one or the other, whichever uh, comes out better. But uh, I will post and let you know. Appreciate you joining. I'm going to get Janet and we're going to practice and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to video some songs and maybe try to We'll do a live or do some splicing together. But look, make sure that you are saved. I really want you saved. And I'm going to bring this thing into me uh, <clears throat> right now. And uh, this is a, a short version. Aaron was on. Margaret, Alma, thank you for the comments. Joyce, uh, Chris, Lorraine, the rest of you, thank you. And those that were on the previous feed. Um, that uh, and I'll end with this story. If you're just joining, I had the previous feed going, Janet sang, and then I came on and she left, and I didn't go around, I couldn't see. And I was preaching, and she said I had bug, you know, them bug eyes. I had hit a button to get, to get that filter on there, so I had to delete that and start over. So, uh, but look, appreciate you joining. Let the Lord revive you and be your guide. Thank you.